So we are continuing on with our series here on boundaries. We've uh, been looking at the kind of the definition, the basic boundaries, uh, some of the laws of boundaries. Boundaries are the code of life in every one of our lives uh, that define what we are responsible for and what we are not responsible for, particularly in our relationships between one another. This is inescapable. Everyone has them, whether you have good ones or bad ones. It permeates our entire life. So uh, if you're kind of catching up on the series, they're on uh, YouTube uh, under G Free Sermons that you can catch up on. But today we're going to look on kind of the other side. Some people experience this of going, okay, well, boundaries, that sounds like a kind of a cool concept, uh, and I want to get into this, but I think there are some problems. And so today we're going to deal with the myths, easy for me to say, myths, uh, uh, of boundaries here. So today is Boundaries the Mythbusters uh, edition here, all right? So we're going to blow some stuff up and no. no, no. All right, the first myth that we're going to, there, there's a number of myths in this book. We're not going hit, to hit them all. I'm just going to pick, I've picked out three of them, spend most of the time on one and just kind of uh, minor on the other two. So the first myth that I want to deal with is the myth, if I set boundaries, I'm being selfish, if I tell people no in my life and go, you know what, you call me up and you need my help and uh, I'm up to my eyeballs and I tell you no, I just, I just can't handle it, I've got other responsibilities, that's being selfish. If, if somebody says, hey, will you take on this task? And I say, no, I, I just don't have room in my life at this point to do this or I don't feel like that's a real passion of mine, that's being selfish. You should just do what other people ask you to do that's the godly christian thing we have to go no further than sunday school to understand this truth you've been taught it right j-o-y jesus first other second yourself last that means if anybody comes along and asks you you got to say yes, because you are last. It's selfish to put yourself first. And so this whole boundary concept, this ability to be able to go, yeah, that's my responsibility, or no, that's not my responsibility, seems to be where we're putting others behind ourselves, where we're putting our own wants and needs in front of somebody else. How could we do that? I think we should ask Jesus. Should we ask Jesus this morning about this? Let's do this. Luke chapter 4. At daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him because he was teaching and healing. And when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. We want you here. We want to, you, we, your sermons are so full of great illustrations and we love your healings. You've got to stay here with us. But he said, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, because that is why I was sent. And he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. Now, we just went through reading like Wesley, right? So you're learning these, these things of going, how do you observe? We've read a passage. What do you notice here? What, what's an important thing of what the people want? What do they want? They tried to keep him from leaving. We have wants, we have needs, we want you to meet them. Please don't, I mean, this looks good, doesn't it? People not wanting Jesus to leave. Man, I'd say that church got it, right? Is there any contrast here? If you are looking for a contrast, look for a but. Right? But, Jesus said, so what do we have? We have what the people want, a very nice request. We want you to be here. We want you to speak in our lives. We want you to be active. But Jesus says no. He says, I've got work to do, right? Right. So what reason is he giving here? What reason, if we wanted to kind of summarize this, what, you know, is he just going because I don't feel like it? What reason is he giving? What type of reason? His mission, right? What he says, this is what God has me on track doing. So I give that reason, all right? Okay, 
All right, we get that. All right, if God told him to move on, then don't listen to other people. Hey, let's, let's look at another example. Next chapter, Luke chapter 5. He's going around, he's continuing his ministry. Now, news about Jesus spread all the more so that the crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sickness and their, of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. So what do the people want? Let's observe. What do they want? They came to hear him, have, have him teach him and get him healed. This is what the people want. Do we have a contrast? Do you see a big old butt up there? Yeah. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. So what reason does Jesus give to tell the people no in this story? His mission. He's got something else more important to do. No. Nope. He's not running off and doing more ministry. What's he doing? Right. How selfish of him. I cannot believe this. Everybody get out a pair of scissors. We're going to cut this out. Obviously, he didn't learn the joy principle. You know. This is, this is a very personal reason, right? This isn't just I have another task to do, but this is what I need to go away. And he tells people no to something that we would go, wow, that's exactly what we want people to be asking. Now, I could throw up a couple other examples where he told people no because they had bad reasons, but we're not going to get... But we could see from two back-to-back examples, Jesus had no problem telling people no, and no to the absolutely good request. Both for mission's sake but also for personal sake. I think we need to redefine how we understand that whole joy principle. Certainly there's something right about that, but we often misapply it, right? If we understand that as a principle of going, you know what, I can never say no. I can always be run over. There's no right place for me to say, this is what I need. We've misunderstood it. We need to follow Jesus' example here and say there are appropriate times to say no, even when the request is absolutely right, let alone the times that it's not right. So guess what? This myth, busted, right? It's busted. Boundaries are not selfish. Boundaries are being responsible with my life and appropriately setting, hey, there is a right time to say no. Even Jesus did this. Um, so uh, let's. each myth has kind of a corresponding truth to it. On the other side of it, this is not from the book, this is my, uh, my own thoughts here. So the truth, the other side of this myth is when I set up boundaries, I'm actually more able to care for other people. See, it's, it's almost an ironic twist of going, it looks like when I say no to somebody... I don't really care about you, or, or I'm not making time for you. But the truth of it is, as we develop healthier boundaries, we increase our capacity to be able to care for people and to do it well. You want to know the proof? John chapter 6. Jesus, or not John chapter 6, I'm sorry, that's a different example. Um, Matthew 14. Jesus finds out about John the Baptist getting beheaded. This is his cousin, this is his friend, this is his partner in ministry. And it says, when he heard the news, he withdrew to a lonely place. The people seeking him hunted him down. And they came to him. And in that moment, in the solitary, in a very much a personal moment for him uh, of taking time and reflection, it says, He had compassion. And so he began to teach and to heal the people. Oh. See, he had taken time away, but he was also able to respond. He didn't just kind of put up this harsh no anytime. It increased his capacity. So instead of the joy principle, I think we should go with the airline example right here, right? Which is to do what? 
Put your own mask on first. There was a great cartoon. I wanted to put it up there. There was a guy putting one on and shoving the kid off to the side. But we won't do that. The idea is not to, you're not trying to diss people, right? You're not trying to shut them out. It's when you take care of yourself, then you're able to do the right thing for the people around you, right? Well, if we use the joy principle, we'd have somebody running around trying to fit everybody else's mask on and eventually collapsing because they didn't get enough breath in their lungs and they become the problem then. It's okay. It's okay to say no at right times and to, to go, I've got to create space for me to be with God. I need space for me to rest. I need space to go, boy, that's just not really what I want to be doing or that's not my passion. It, it's okay. Jesus did. But then we take out of that so that we can be a blessing to others at the right time. Okay? Myth number two. If I set boundaries, I will hurt others. Now, this picture is actually a great description of breaking boundaries, <laughs> right? But if I set boundaries, I'm going to hurt other people. And guess what? This is plausible. This is plausible. This, is, this, this could be true. You start setting boundaries, and boundaries can actually be at times a painful process it's not fun getting told no it really isn't and it can cause a little bit of tension and strife in your relationships at least initially maybe even a little further than that somebody might get a little ticked off when you set one up so this is plausible it's not just a perfect myth in fact the book explains it a little better in another section it says it makes a distinction between harm and hurt It says when you set up boundaries, you don't harm other people. You might hurt their feelings. They might be a little sore about it. But you know what? That's not exactly harm. We need to get to a place in our culture where every little offense, every little feeling I have, it, we don't take it as going, oh, you've damaged me. Okay, so it hurt. We can roll with that, all right? We'll work it out. Hurt and harm are different. So let's, let's kind of rephrase this by the book's own admission. If I set boundaries, I will harm others. That's not true. That is a perfect myth here. Um, and so what we want to look at is this distinction between what harm and hurt is. The difference is it can look a little bit the same, but it's the difference of whether you go to a boxer or you go to the doctor. Now, you, you can get hurt in both places, can't you? Right? I've had plenty of people here recovering from surgery. A boxer didn't do that to you. Right? You went to see a doctor and he cut you open and all of a sudden six months of your life have just kind of been set aside trying to get back to where you once were. But the difference is that the doctor is not meaning to damage you. It is to better you. You go to a boxer... And what's his intent? Put you down, right? There's no question about this of going, I've got an adversary. He is trying to harm me. He is trying to break me down. He's not making me better. And so when we look at boundaries, we have to understand what's the intent here. Um, for you to take more responsibility of your life and, and your feelings, your thoughts, your opinions, your choices... Uh, a whole array of things, is healthy. That's moving towards good. And while it may create a little bit of pain, that's okay. It's not meant to harm. Let's look at uh, Jesus again here. This is an example from Matthew 19. The, the young rich ruler, we're not going to go through the whole story. Remember, the guy comes up to Jesus and says, Jesus, I want to go to heaven. How do I get this nailed down? You know, how big of a check do I need to write? How many Sunday schools do I need to attend? Do I have to sign up for small groups? Jesus said, yes. You got to sign up for small group. No. no. <clears throat> he goes, hey, you know what? He tells him the law, and then he finally says, go and sell all that you have and come and follow me. 
If you want to be perfect, sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. And when the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. If we kept on reading, what would happen is Jesus runs after him and goes, whoa, 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 whoa. did I say sell all your possessions? I meant only 50%. I didn't want to make this too hard for you. You know, right? We can do it on an extended layaway plan. Jesus stands there with a man that had approached him and said, I want the answer to life. And when he gives it, he lets this man walk away. The man wasn't sad in coming to Jesus. He was sad after he had dealt with Jesus, right? He created pain. And Jesus didn't relieve that pain. His next line is, how hard is it for a rich person to enter heaven? They've got so many trappings in their life. Jesus was setting a boundary for this relationship with God. And when you do that, some people are going to reject it. They're not going to like it. They may walk away sad. They're going to be pained, and you will be too. Let's, let's be fair about this. Um, it's, it's not always going to kind of make everything nice and rosy, but it's healthy. It's right. You don't start going back and going, oh, okay, well, I guess that really wasn't that important. Jesus set it up and said... Here's what it is. So we go back to that harm and hurt. We could also think of it in terms of punishment and pain. Jesus created pain, but he wasn't punishing. And when we set up boundaries, we need to be careful of our motivations. Am I doing this to try and punish somebody? Eh, then that's really not a real boundary. Because boundaries aren't offensive. They're not, they're, they're not out there to bring damage. They may cause pain but it's pain of growth, growth for yourself and for the other person to go, okay, well, now I've got to manage it. I've had people in in our church that I've gone and I've asked about different positions. They took time with it, they came back, and they told me no. And you know what? I rejoiced. I said, because I knew that they took time with it, that they went to God, that they looked at it for their, their life, I went, that's a solid no. It created havoc or not havoc but you know i had to keep on working right it didn't solve a problem for me but i was like you know what that was good and that was all right i received it so the other side of this the truth so this myth is busted but the other side of it is that when i set boundaries i am being responsible for me and to you this is actually in another ironic twist Something that is good for both of us. Paul talks about it in Ephesians 4 as he kind of sets up the church. He says, instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of Christ. And a few verses later, therefore, put off falsehood. Stop telling people yes when you really mean no. Stop pretending things are this way when they're really this way. Stop doing that. Speak truthfully to your neighbor for we are all members of one body. It's not just healthy for me to set a boundary, it's healthy for us. Do you get that? Because we're all together, this is good. Yeah, it's going to create some pain, some tension every once in a while, but in the long run, in the long course of this, it's going to be good. Let me read from you uh, uh, from the book here. I thought they had a really good passage on this. He writes, when we cause pain by making choices, when we cause pain by making choices that others do not like, which I never do, (laughs) just don't talk to Eileen, we also cause pain by confronting people when they are wrong or when a situation has gone sideways. But if we do not share our anger with one another, bitterness and hatred can set in. We need to be honest with one another about how we are hurt, how we feel. You need to speak truthfully to your neighbor, for you are all members of one body. This is good for us. You can't believe that myth of going, oh, this is going to damage something. It's not going to damage anybody. This is going to create something stronger. 
as we can speak truthfully to one another. Finally, th- third myth. If I set boundaries, uh-oh, others will hurt me. And guess what? This is plausible. Actually, this is probable, <laughs> right? Because when we set something up and somebody doesn't like that, I make a choice or I make a stand and somebody doesn't like it, holy mackerel. Now we're talking about this type of retaliation. Oh, well, if you're going to do that, I'm going to give you the silent treatment. Nobody's gotten that in here, right? I mean, that's, that's so far out of the scope of things. The silent treatment or, you know, well, fine, I'm not going to do this with my money now or I'm not going to... All this kind of, because you did that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to retaliate type of thing. So, th- yeah, you know what? This isn't just a myth. This is probably going to happen. But remember, we need to keep in that distinction. It's not just if we're going to be hurt. Will somebody harm me? Well, no. They, they get the right to choose their, their own way here. Um, I like that uh, line in uh, uh, Billy Joel's song, And So It Goes. You know, he's talk, he's, it's a song about his breakup with uh, Christy Brinkley. And just the awkwardness of later on. And he goes, you know, I've made some decisions, but you get to make decisions too, right? As we set boundaries, other people get the right to set boundaries. Now, they may do it in a retaliatory fashion. You can't stop that because boundaries are not meant for control or manipulation. The idea here is not, I set up a boundary so I can make you feel something or do something and control you. This is more about going, this is what I value, this is where I stand, this is what I want or need, and will you respect that? Right? Somebody may go, I won't. I shared a story a couple weeks ago about my dad and him chewing tobacco and having me. He was a great example to me of respecting that boundary. Never asked me again, not even once, never even hinted at it. He respected that. I could have had a dad that went, gave me a wallop on the ear and said, you're going to go down there anyways. I don't care. You're going to listen to me. But he didn't. Scripture talks about the wise and unwise or stable and unstable. And you need to understand this distinction here of uh, the wise person, the stable person is a person in your life that's going to respect your boundaries. They're going to respect your opinions and your choices. That's not agree, but they're going to respect it. You are a person, you, you have the right. God has given you that right and free will to make those choices. You're going to, you may live with some of the consequences, but I'm going to respect that. The unstable, the unrighteous, the, the emotionally unhealthy is going to, they hate boundaries. They hate limits. They hate when you say no. It rattles their world, and they may respond very aggressively towards that so it may come but i want to ask you a question if you are afraid to set a boundary because you go oh they're going to do this they're going to treat me like this then how real is that relationship anyways Hmm? if you live in fear of going i can't really be myself i can't say what I want or what I believe or what I think without fearing some level of retaliation. That relationship isn't real anyways, guys. And so what what we see is boundaries become a litmus test, a truth teller about this. Listen to this. It says, boundaries are a litmus test for the quality of our relationships. Those people in our lives who can respect our boundaries will love and respect our choices and our opinions and our separateness. But those who cannot respect our boundaries are telling us that they don't love our no. They only love our yes and our compliance. And that's not real relationship. You aren't risking anything by setting up a boundary even though it may look like it he might walk out on me she might walk out on me 
he might do this, she might do that. Maybe my kids tell me they don't like me if I don't give them exactly what they want. But you're risking a ghost. There's nothing real there. And so the question becomes really, what does, what does this fake relationship cost me? This myth is busted. It's not uh, what somebody else will do, it's what they're robbing you of because you won't set a good boundary. So the truth of this is when I set boundaries, I create an opportunity for healthy relationship. There is freedom, there is goodness on the other side. There may be a cost. Let's be fair about this. Because there will be people that will reject and will try to punish you for a good boundary. Hopefully they don't. Hopefully they grow and, and it becomes better and stronger. But not everyone will. But you're better off for it. To compromise yourself, to please someone, is not a good place. So just a few of the myths that we're talking about here today of being, being able to be the person that God has created us to be, discovering and learning.